Hello and today we're going to talk about SSD cache. What is it and why do you need it? SSD caching is not new. It's a means with which to kind of remove a lot of the pressure from the CPU and the memory and indeed the storage media that you use in your NAS, your DAS or your storage device and effectively speed up those internal operations and ultimately all file transmission in general. They assist IOPS, they assist read write, file transfer and stuff like that. But why should you care about SSD caching? Because what SSD caching does is when you are reading and writing um, from a piece of storage media, often the same files are going to be utilized over and over again. And what SSD caching does is it makes a duplicate copy of that information which is moved from your original storage media over to the SSD that you're using for caching, which has significantly higher read write speeds and therefore can assist these, uh, dub these doubled up um, instructions and therefore send the information to and from with regards to read or read and write cache much, much faster and therefore speed up those entire internal IOPS. So the first main you know, reason to use SSD cache in your NAS system is to improve those internal read write operations and IOPS. We did a test a little while ago with the Synology M2D18 card to show how it greatly assisted standard read write operations that were happening in, in multiple locations on a single hard drive thanks to SSD caching seeing that the same files were being used and sent at the same time to multiple locations and then created a copy and then used that SSD to complete the other instructions in the background. Therefore it sliced off around 13 to 20 percent of the speed of your read and write rather than replacing your entire storage area with SSDs. And that's the other reason that people go for SSD caching because they've got hard drives in a NAS and they want a speed performance boost, but they don't want to replace all of their drives with SSD because SSDs are still five to 10 times more expensive per terabyte than hard drives. So SSD cache gives you the reason to spend a few hundred quid between one and 300 pounds and get an enormous performance boost, a notable performance boost to your file transmission, you're sending back and forth, and of course, those individual operations that are IOPS, uh, um, input, output per second. Um, next, not all data lives on the SSD. It doesn't just duplicate all data. Uh, what happens is it's only the data that's been frequently accessed or hot data that gets duplicated, remember not copied, duplicated over to the SSDs. The more frequent a file is accessed, the more it moves over to the SSD cache. And remember, this isn't a manual choice. The controller, the storage controller on your NAS, the CPU, will make that decision. It will see the files that are constantly accessed and move them over. It is worth mentioning that as a file decreases in the amount of time it's accessed, it may be removed from automatically the SSD cache. Likewise, if the SSD cache completely fills up, then the oldest amount of data added will be removed, the one that's been accessed the longest period of time since, not just old as in the last one that's been put on the SSD, but the one that was accessed the longest ago will be moved from the SSD. And again, this is all done automatically by the storage controller in the NAS and not something that you will have to do. Um, again, from then forward, the data that is requested from the NAS, while you want to read data that lives on the NAS and once it's done frequently, such in the case of virtual machines, where the same files are used to set up and run virtual machines, multiple virtual machines on a NAS, will then be moved over to the SSD and the system will know that when that file, that CAB file, for example, that's very important to Windows, is being accessed frequently, moves to the SSD, the faster portion of storage to bring from it a lot quicker than it would from the hard drive. And again, the other benefit of that is that not only is the SSD and the hard drive accessed at the same time, therefore doubling up, and making it a lot easier to access that information, but the SSD doesn't have to be as big as the storage. You can get away with 128, 250, maybe even 500 gig of SSD to pair with four, six, eight, ter 10 terabytes of storage. So again, you don't have to replace 10 terabytes of storage to get the advantage of SSD. You just have to be proportional so again, just for every terabyte, have 60 gig 
of SSD for every terabyte. Maybe go with that. There are more precise calculations, but they will be based on the amount of storage that you use. SSD caching does count as a much more cost-effective way to get in the performance boost, definitely compared with SSDs and fully populated NAS with SSDs. Indeed, when we did our M2D18 performance tests, we did a test with one volume with, of just SSDs without cache, and it sent 35 gig of files in about 15 minutes, give or take. It made three different locations, and it managed to copy all the files to three different locations in an SSD volume without cache in 15 minutes. Once we added an SSD cache volume to SSD, it managed to do it two and a bit minutes quicker. Even SSDs benefit from SSD cache, even though, quite frankly, you shouldn't bother, it's not worth it. But for a hard drive, we had a hard drive volume without an, uh, a cache, an SSD cache to support it, and the same 35 gig of files to three locations took 38 minutes. Once we added SSD cache, it took 25 minutes, an enormous leap in performance there. So do check out those videos. It's a four-parter and a full 17-minute video if you want to watch the whole thing in one go. If you hate your eyes, do check those out. So again, all of this is conducted by the storage controller on your NAS or if you're using a cache card such as the QM2 series from QNAP or the M2D18 from Synology, they will take care of the cache for you and therefore also lift the work off of the CPU, which is already busy enough with things like RAID handling and stuff like that. And again, I do recommend it solidly for virtual machine users because virtual machine users will always use very similar files over and over again. And particularly if you're doing duplicates of the same VM, and if you're using Container Station and Docker, which is a far more streamlined version, you will see enormous benefits in read write cache and tiered storage and stuff like that. And do check out tiered storage from Kuna. But that is what SSD cache is and how you can benefit from it. If you think you can, do go to the, into the description where there's a whole article covering this subject for you. It's very informative and will tell you everything you need to know. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Chuck me a like if you enjoyed this and subscribe if you want to learn more about network attached storage and the ways in which you can improve your data storage. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.